So my name is Amber, and I was born in Okinawa, Japan, but I am from Atlanta, Georgia. So my experience is that people of color, um, when I hear their coming out stories, there's always some element of tragedy or, um, or, or real struggle or estrangement from their families. And while that's certainly been the case for a lot of people, it wasn't my experience. And I think it's important to also get that story out, that it's not always going to be this really terrible experience. You're not gonna feel completely alone and, and, um, and estranged from your family because, um, with, with, people of, with people of color, really with anybody, but with people of color specifically, our, our family unit is incredibly important. And, um, and you go through a lot with your family. And so feeling estranged from them at any point is, is, is particularly debilitating. And so that, that just wasn't my experience. I thought it was important to get that out. It was Super Bowl Sunday, 2004, and I was headed to a Super Bowl party and I was talking with my mom on the phone. I was trying to get off the phone with her. And right when I was trying to get off the phone, uh, she asked if I had anything I wanted to talk to her about or anything, anything more I wanted to say. And I said, no, I think I, I think I covered it. Everything's going well, you know, classes are going great, you know, trying to get off the phone. And she said, well, you sure you don't have anything you need to say? No, no, I'm all set. I think we covered everything. She goes, well, what about Allison? And Allison is this girl that, that, I, that I dated. And so she was asking if I wanted to say anything about Allison. And I said, no, I don't have anything to tell you about Allison. And, uh, and she waited a little longer and she's like, okay, well, I guess I'm gonna have to walk you through this. Right? And so, um, so I was silent. I had no idea what she was, I mean, I think I had an idea of what she was referring to, but it was just so out of the realm of my, my understanding of how this process works uh, that I just wasn't ready. And so she, she said, okay, um, Mom, I am, and I was silent because I had no idea what I was supposed to say. And, and she said it again, Mom, I am. And, um, and I just started crying. I never finished the sentence. I never went through it. I just started, I just broke down and started crying. And uh, I said over and over again, I'm so sorry. I'm just so sorry. I, I tried for so long to be perfect. I don't mean to disappoint you. And I was just, I was just brokenhearted, um, and I felt like I had broken her heart. And she just kept saying she, it was okay. She's like, it's okay. I love you. It's okay. It's okay. Um, and we eventually got off the phone. I don't remember how I got off the phone, but we got off the phone. And about the summer of that year, I ended up going, going back home and landing by myself this time. And we were cleaning up the garage. And I remember um, having like a series of conversations that summer about about what it meant to be bisexual because that's 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 what I came out as because I, I was bisexual, I was still attracted to men. Um, I just wasn't dating one at the time. And the questions that she asked centered around, I mean the very first question she asked me was like, okay, 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 okay. So you're walking down a street and Denzel Washington is coming at you from this end and Halle Berry's coming at you from who do you look at? I mean <laughs> looking at it just it, they're they were ridiculous questions, but they weren't questions asked out of malice. Like she really was truly trying to understand. And um, they were difficult questions to answer because I would look at Halle Berry, but that's just because Halle Berry just generally more attractive than Denzel Washington, but maybe that's not maybe that's how gay I am. But it was also more that like Denzel Washington's a little older than, you know, it, it, so it just, it got to be a bit of a headache, but it was nice that she stayed engaged and she was always asking kind of silly questions like that. Um, my mother passed suddenly in 2008 um, and tragically and when I was dealing with my grief with her passing I remember googling her and just looking up some of the obituaries and things people had to say and I stumbled across an article that one of her students from one of her former students at Virginia Tech had written and People say incredible things about my mom. Talk about her eloquence and her beauty and her grace and her 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 way of like just making people everyone feel like comfortable and at home. Um, and all of those things mean a lot to me. But this student wrote this article, and he said that what meant the most to him is that she was the greatest LGBT ally Virginia Tech students have. And like. Oh God, I don't, want to get, I don't want to get choked up, but um, out of all the things that I've ever heard about my mother, that absolutely meant the most to me. And um, I just feel so blessed to have had that in my life. And I just wish that other people 
be so lucky. So that's it.